future work. First part is background. In this part, I'll explain about multicore and its trend. Uh, nowadays, the multicore processor are becoming an integral part of, of embedded device as well as the enterprise system. In addition, the core speed and the number of uh, cores are continuously increasing. This slide shows the trend of multi-core processors and, and the global server desktop P, uh, CPU and application processor, which is used in embedded device market forecast. As you can see, this sales estimate of AP market has, has been steadily increasing about 49% growth uh, each year. They more as following the chart, finally the sales estimate of AP market will surpass, sub surpass that of CPU market by 2015, um, according to Gartner report. Uh, these photographs are the representat rep representative and newest embedded device such as smartphone, tablet piece, and their multi-core multi SOCs. This project has four core CPUs and GPU or more. Using multi-core processor, we are able to reduce the power consumption without performance de degradation. So thanks to multi-cores, now we are able to make the best use of personal computing device instead of desktop PC. This is a new multi-core processor architecture called Tegra 3, made by NVIDIA. The new feature of this architecture is that um, they have four cores, Cortex-A9, and one more core, which is designed uh, same architecture, Cortex-A9, but its frequency is limited by 500 MHz, and so-called companion CPU core. That is, Tegra 3 have high performance quad cores and low power additional core. So what is the advantage of this architecture? With this architecture, Tegra 3 can reduce the power consumption much more. Uh, Multi-core processor can reduce power consumption, but uh, if, if, most of, uh, if, if most of tasks of smart device are very right, like uh, audio play, simple web surfing, or active standby mode, they don't need to have fast speed or high performance, but are just want wasted high power in order to maintain the cores. So in this case, Tegra 3 use a low power consumption CPU for low, low power task instead of previous high performance cores. And these architectures, which is composed different cores, uh, is generally called asymmetric multiprocessing processor, shortly AMP. This slide shows another AMP processor architecture known as Big Wheel Solution, comes from ARM. As you can see, this architecture consists of high performance core, Cortex A15, called the Big Core and energy efficient core Cortex A7 called Little Core. Therefore, the process can provide the both high performance as well as uh, extreme power efficiency, efficiency to extend battery life. Following ARM's white paper, by selecting the optimal processor for each task, Big Little can extend battery life by up to 70%. Besides, there is similar as SOC chips, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon S4. According to Qualcomm's document, S4 can uh, use the per core DVFS so that their energy consumption is so low like other AMP processor. So far, I explained about the multi-core processor and their features uh, due to its high performance and energy saving architecture, 
Now we can make the best use of personal computing device with embedded multi-core processor. Well, so what should be done to maximize the, their superiority from the software perspective? First, useful programming library and models are required for multi-core. Second, more software development tools are needed for multi-core system. And third, enhanced or new OS features are needed for multi-core software. Consequently, mm, first tag of software technology are needed to support new architectures, and all of these requirements are important to maximize the ability of multi-core. However, in our opinion, OS issues are the most important and difficult to develop. So our team above all have focused on kernel layer, especially scheduler. Before, to, before to talk about the multi-core scheduler in this part, I simply talk about the history of Linux schedulers. As you already know, the characteristics of previous kernel scheduler are following. Uh, in the in the schedule of kernel version 1.2 used minimal design. The 1.2 Linux scheduler used a circular queue for runnable task management that operated with a round robin scheduling policy. The scheduler wasn't complex but was simple and fast at that time. Linux kernel version 2.2 introduced the idea of scheduling classes permitting scheduling policies for real-time tasks, non-preemptive tasks, and non-real-time tasks. The 2.2 scheduler also includes support for symmetric multiprocessing processor, shortly called SMP, with simple policy. And uh, kernel version 2.4, Linux support, supported scalable rock and a single on queue per CPU core, and in this version, mm, the scheduler had order of n complexity. So, so the time it takes to schedule, so the time it takes to schedule the, a task is a function of a number of tasks in, in the system. Uh, this scheduler was relatively simple, but it was relatively inefficient, efficient, wrecked. Uh, uh, scalability and it also wrecked features to exploit multi-core processors. Uh, in kernel in version 2.6, there are two main scheduling policy. Before the version 2.6.23, the scheduler has order of one comp complexity, so generally called one scheduler. O1 scheduler was designed to solve many of the problems with the 2.4 scheduler. In this version, the scheduler was not required to iterate the entire task list to identify the next task to schedule. The O1 scheduler kept track of non-able task in a run queue, which meant that uh, to identify the task to execute next using bitmap indexing, bitmap indexing. Therefore, the scheduler simply needed to dequeue the next task of the specific active per priority on queue. This figure shows the data structure of O1 scheduler. The O1 scheduler was much more scalable and incorporated uh, in interactivity metrics with um, numerous, numerous heuristics to determine whether tasks were I.O. bound or process bound. But O1 scheduler has some problem like slow response time, throughput force, and non-fair condition like this example. So the new algorithm like staircase, staircase scheduler Rotating scale care deadline scheduler were developed, but finally, after kernel version 2.6.23, the new scheduler called completely fair scheduler. 
CFS is adapted and CFS is still used today. Mm, the main idea of CFS is to maintain balance in providing process time to tasks. To determine the balance, the CFS maintains the amount of time provided, provided to uh, a given task in what's called the virtual runtime. So CFS always tries to run the task uh, with the smallest virtual runtime. In addition, uh, to maintain their virtual runtime, CFS uses a red black tree data structure like this figure. Red black tree is a kind of balanced binary search tree and has a self-balancing functionality. Ac according to the characteristics of red black tree, CFS or has order of log and times complex time complexity to operate the tree like search and insertion. CFS is still used in corner since version 2.6.23 and so we, we think that CFS is the best scheduling policy until now, and this means implicitly the fairness of CFS is most superior than other others in a single core. Where so then how how is the CFS in multi-core environment? Of course, since CFS is has many many good features for SMP processor. <laughs> so CFS is still, still considered smart, but despite, despite such advantage, the Linux can for short of expectation when it comes to fair share multi-core scheduling. So in the next part, I'll talk about the details of CFS multi -core in multi-core environment. Okay, to analyze CFS in the multi-core environment, first uh, let's, let's think about uh, its ro load balancing mechanism. This slide shows the slide show the load balancing of CFS. As you can see, in the CFS, every core has a run queue, uh, which is a red black tree, and when one of these conditions is satis satisfies, load balancing is started. Let's check the load balancing start conditions. First condition is when task fork exec or wake up. I think it's, it's fair condition. And second is when a run queue becomes empty and idle. So it also fair. Mm. This animation of last con uh, this is animations of last condition. First, when the scheduler find the busiest queue, uh, task in busiest long queue are migrated uh, into this long queue. So the CFS is able to keep its global fairness, but we should be able to rethink the last condition. In order to keep global fairness, CFS periodically should check the maximum and minimum load, uh, load out of all core. Therefore, this scenario may lead to some overhead, and it's the, uh, if the check period is shorter, the overhead can be larger. But actually, in CFS, overall performance is more important than global fairness. That is, CFS does not migrate the task in order to reduce migration cost pos uh, as possible according to these conditions. For example, the load of run Q, QK is defined by like first formula, uh, and SK is the set of task in QK. Uh, and second formula determines the amount of 
amount of load to move from BG stick Q to QK. Uh, and if the third, but if the third formula condition holds, CFS does not move any task. Uh, this means that the migration is more costly than imbalanced processing. As a result, CFS cannot obtain a global fairness and scalability for multi-core, I think. This is an example of CFS load balance. Uh, in this example, uh, there are five tasks from T1 to T5. T1's weight is uh, 1,024, and from T2 to T5's weight is 335. That is, T1's weight is three times bigger than others, uh, and, assume sh uh, and assume that T1 is running on core 1, and the others are running on core 2. According to previous formulas, scheduler will decide whether to perform load balance or not. But in this example, scheduler decides not to perform load balance. As a result, although T1's weight is three times bigger than other tasks, uh, the runtime of task one is four times longer than other tasks. Therefore, in this case, CFS forced to achieve fairness, and even if uh, exactly the same amount of load is given to each core, it will happen again. Thus, our team have researched to complement of this um, situation and we think carefully that uh, it's time to rethink the scheduler for embedded Linux system, but we, we face the problem that is the global fairness the most important factor in multi-core? Mm, it is hard to answer easily, so we perform some experiment to find the answer. Uh, literally, mm, perfect load balancing ensures that all cores have same amount of work, and the execution time of each course is almost the same. In our world, superior load balancing scheduler has outstanding global fairness. Therefore, the first requirement of efficient multi-core embedded Linux scheduler is, of course, the global fairness. But as you know, task migration may cause some overhead cost, and it may also cause to increase the cache miss rate. So the second con consideration of multi-core scheduler is maximum, maximize cache effectiveness. However, the expectation of cache effectiveness is very difficult because they are influ influenced by their workload, CPU architecture, and, and so on. But in case of embedded device, like uh, smart smartphone, we can find out some uh, common feature like, like this. So we think it is possible to design the new scheduler to support efficiently for multi-core embedded device. But as you know, it takes uh, sufficient time to develop and it's so much hard to work. So among those requirements, we decided to research to improve the global fairness above all. Uh, from, from this slide, I'll talk about our research result last year. In last year, our team tried to analyze current scheduler and to improve the global fairness. So we adapted a previous research called distributed weighted round robin, shortly called DWRR algorithm to CFS scheduler. And compare CFS and, and DWRR as conducting various experiments. So in this, in this part, first I, I'll explain the DWRR algorithm, and next part I'll show the comparison experiment result. DWRR is the most intuitive algorithm, and its main goal is simple and obviously to achieve global fairness in multi-core. DWRR algorithm is 
proposed by Lee as a scalable multi-core processor fair share scheduling algorithm. Uh, it schedules tasks via weighted round robin on each core. <coughs> Across cores, it <coughs> performs load balancing to ensure that all cores, all tasks go through the same run, number of rounds. This, this is the main architecture of DWRR. As you can see, each core has two run queue. One is active and the other is expired run queue, like O1 scheduler. And each run queue is also red brick tree. Mm. There are three important definitions in the DWRR. First, round slice is defined to be small w and large b, a small w multiply large b. Where W is the thread, thread weight and B is the system-wide con con constant, which is round slice unit. Second concept is round. Round is the shortest time period during which every thread in the system completes com at least one of its round slice. The round slice of a uh, thread determines the total CPU time that the thread is allowed <coughs> to receive in, in each, each round. When a thread used up each round slice, we said that this thread has finished the round. Thus, DWLR removed it from, from the CPU run queue to prevent it from running again, and the thread is moved to round expired run queue. This operation can be maintained, can be maintained the local fairness. <coughs> oh, sorry. When all threads on this CPU have finished the current DWRR round, DWRR searches other CPUs for thread, threads that have not, have not and moved them over. This section is round, round balancing. If none is found other CPU, the, the CPU in, increments uh, its round number and allows all, all local threads to advance the, to the next round with the full round slice. And this operation can be maintained the uh, global fairness. Uh, in the next slide, I show you an example of WRR operation. Mm. This shows the oops. This shows the, the WRR's operation. First, assume two CPUs and three threads A, B, and C, each with uh, weight one and round slice of, of one time unit. And one, one important assumption is that task migration cost is ignored. At time zero, A and B in round active of CPU zero, and C in round active of CPU one. At the time one, both A and B have run half a time unit, and C ha has has run one time un one time unit because of uh, the DWRR excuse the the uh, uh, round 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 slice. Does C C move to round expired on CPU one since its round active becomes empty? CPU one performs round balancing and. Moved, m moves B to round active, but not A, because it is currently running. At time 1.5, A, both A and B have for one time unit, so they move to round expired of their CPUs. Both CPUs then perform round balancing, but find no threat to move. The they switch round active and round expired and advance to round one. Therefore, uh, with DWRR, we can finish the job at time 1.5. But 
how about CFS load balancing? In case of CFS algorithm, load balancing will not be performed because A, B, C's weight is same and thus it is not a uh, condition to perform load balance. So A, A, B are performed only in CPU 0 and C is performed in CPU 1, thus total time is needed uh, time 2. Therefore, DWRR uh, is able to solve the previous uh, CFS problem. Yeah. So basically, it moves B over to C's CPU. I'm sorry? Wait, so you moved B over to C's CPU on that? B. After round, after round zero, you went to, or it goes off, it looks like it balanced what B to C. I'm a little confused why. On the first line, what, uh, from A and B were on the same CPU, correct? and C is on CPU 1. And then you switched, then you migrated B over to CPU 1. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if this continued, would B actually bounce back to CPU 0? If after this whole slide, yeah, yeah. I mean, if A is running now and you have C and B, then it's possible you're going to be ping-ponging B between CPU 0 and CPU 1. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I don't understand what you're talking Sec, 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 second paragraph. Yeah. Well, sec, second figures. Yep. Second level figure. It? Where, where, where the figure? Yeah. Okay. So let's say where the arrow started. You have A and B sharing. You know, C finishes round or whatever, but C is still in the running state, correct? Yeah. Well, you're saying it just finished around. And you're doing a load balancing, and you say, oh, I can move B onto C CPU. Um, yeah. So A, I guess, gets more CPU, or, and then A finishes. Now you have C and B. Now you finish off with C or A on its own CPU, <coughs> and on the CPU 1, you have C and B. Now, if we were to continue the round, A would finish its round, and then you have C and B using half you know, each the CPU. Wouldn't that also, if you continued here, wouldn't it just then load balance B again back to CPU zero? So basically at the end of this slide, we can actually replace A, B with C and B, and C with kind of A. And wouldn't that cause a ping pong? Maybe I don't understand what's going on. C has the first space time two and 2.5. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, what happens is yeah, time two. You got here one, one, yeah. But but we we assume that a a b and c just just uh, wasted it one time slice one. Right, and you really I understand you're trying to give everyone more fairness or whatever, but the problem is you're, it's going to cause a lot more ping pong between the different CPUs. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you're going to hit a cash problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so you so may actually slow things down. So yeah, so I, I talk, talk. What you're trying to ask is, is the cost <laughs> of context of switching from one CPU to the other incorporated into this algorithm? Yes. That, yeah. yeah. Are you taking right? the cost of the migration itself? Yeah, so yeah. obviously you're right, but but we we did not did not consider because we we it, it, this research is the <laughs> first step of our project, so we just we just improve the global fairness. Okay. So. So the cash miss rate or some other things we we, we uh because there's a reason why CFS does not try to be truly balanced. There's actually a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying you can make it truly balanced, but it might actually hurt things. But oh, here you go. Okay, okay. So yeah, is the DWRI the best solution for multi-core system? We think the DWR obvious have <laughs> pros, but because of uh, their architecture like O1 and their assum assumptions are too critical to be ne neglected. So, yeah, you're right. DWR <laughs> have also obvious weak points, like the non-consideration migration overhead, high, higher cache miss rate, and so on. So, we have to obtain its 
pros, uh, global fairness, and we improve its limitation, and our team have tried to do so continuously. So far, I, I explained the DWLR algorithm, key, key ideas, and the, its limitation. Now I show you the comparison result between CFS and DWLR. The test environment is like this. Our target force consists of quad-core CPU Cortex-A9, and we used Linaro Ubuntu 12.04, and the kernel version is uh, 3.1.41. The com comparison scheduler are, of course, CFS and CFS with DWRR. This is the practical experiment result of comparison of CFS and DWRR. We ran five tasks on four cores, and the tasks are just perform an infinite, infinite loop. And we use top, we use top util to monitor CPU allocation. And this figure shows the snapshots of top for each scheduler. As you can see, CPU utilization of tasks in DWLR achieved nearly, nearly perfect fairness. This is a natural result on reflection of DWLR operation, so we need to be perform more experiment. This ben benchmark is performed to show the performance comparison when the CPU cores are busy. In this case, we use the video play, and the running time of video is 150 seconds. The video Decoding time of each case are these. As you can see, in this case, DWRR has also best performance. Another test is to compare the performance with database benchmark. Recently, most smart devices have has their own database engine in their platform and the use, usage of database is growing. So we tested the database benchmark using SysBenchy, uh, the test mode set OLTP, which has, has a lot of uh, file I.O. and the uh, I.O. pattern is random orders and small size data. I think this pattern is common case in smart devices. As you can see, in this case, the WRR transact DWRR's transactions per second is second larger among them. Interesting point of this um, CFS with scale granularity set 1.25 millisecond, which is equal to the round slice unit of <coughs> DWRR, shows the best performance. Um, con consequently, in, in case of the d d database, uh, which have a lot of small size and the minor workload, Short, shorter time slice has better performance, but the overhead with DWR is slice slight, I think. Final benchmark is JavaScript benchmark. Maybe web application are in the spotlight today. The Pop, uh, because of its in independability for any platform, the powerful HTML5 based on JavaScript function. So it, it's important to benchmark the HTML5, especially JavaScript engines. And we tested the JavaScript benchmark using uh, Sun, Sun Spider, which is famous benchmark suit. Uh, in this benchmark, DWR has good performance compared with CFS, but I think this result is actually not <coughs> meaningful because, because JavaScript engine does not use multi-thread anyway. Multi -thread. Anyway, in, in this case, DWR is quite good, I think. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Are you also measuring the fairness of the different schedulers? No, we. It, it's it's uh, yeah. it, yeah. 
very hard to detect the theories. So actually, we 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 test the first first benchmark. We we show the uh, DWR is, is has a best variance, and um, other experiment we just know is the DWR is or really good in common case or practical case. So, yeah. Okay, <laughs> conclusion. As previous mentioned, the weighted-based algorithm in multi-core like CFS <laughs> is able to fall to achieve fairness <laughs> in practical even if the exactly <coughs> same amount of round uh, amount of load is given to each core. Yes, the WRR can be new trial to improve the scheduler in multi-core system, but the WRR has also have several problems, so it has it is not the best solution. So consequently, uh, our conclusion is that rethinking the multi-core aware scheduler is worth enough now. So I hope to be develop the new scheduler which can fulfill the requirements embedded in multi-core systems. And this is uh, our team's future work. OK, thank you. Any question? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to be sure I understand the, the, the test itself. Sounds like you're just trying one big task and spreading its work across the processors. And of course, your schedule is going to work better for that one big task. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. what about the problem where a, a typical system is doing 20 things at once and some of them are, have, have different priorities and whatever? What do you, how do you solve that problem uh, with with this model? Actually. Okay, actually, <coughs> actually, our 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 organization is concerned our government. So government. So our project is uh, uh, is is just focused on the special case. So right. Okay. So so we just try this like this this scenario, but we we. Yeah, we have to do so many experiments and so many. Right, right. Yeah, think, think, think the so many environment or some case. So, if if, if you, uh, when we we uh, we we will get uh, some um, some result, uh, we we right. will okay. talk. I mean, it again. sounds like it needs to be more of a of a policy. They could be adjusted yes. in the kernel rather than changing the core capabilities of the scheduler. Right? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Another question. <coughs> yeah. Thank you to listening.